All right, guys, this is Donald Trump here. He's going to see Macron in France. Okay, so... Uh, Or whatever his name is. I mean, not Donald Trump, I mean Boris Johnson. I don't know where my brain is today, guys. I do apologise. I meant Boris Johnson. He's a bit like Donald Trump, I suppose. Prime Minister, dear Boris Johnson, here today in Paris. Uh, very pleased about the, your first visit to France since you took office. We had uh, opportunities to talk on the telephone a couple of hours after you took office as Prime Minister. And I'm very pleased that today we have a chance to discuss um, more. Please allow me to say first and foremost that the relationship between our two countries is essential and immutable, no matter when and no matter the circumstances. It is the case in particular when it comes to foreign policy, defense, and your decision to come to Paris and embodies uh, this, the necessity of <coughs> this relationship, this privileged relationship. This relationship is anchored in your history, a long history, there are also treaties between our two countries which go beyond the European Union and there are some genuine commitments, engagement and crisis, ongoing crisis we have to deal with together like Iran, the Sahel, the fight against climate change, girls' education. The engagement of both our countries together has always been constant and remains essential. A few days ahead of the G7, our discussions will also enable us to closely coordinate on these matters. Of course, we'll also inevitably talk about Brexit, and you know my position in this respect. It is near, and I'm well aware that this is in, on your mind day in, day out. First of all, my position has always been to respect the sovereign choice made by the British people to leave the European Union I regret it. Had I been a British uh, voter, I would have made a different choice. But I respect democracy and the wishes of peoples, and I therefore believe that we now have to implement this choice. Then, my position consists in um, protecting and strengthening the European project, the single market, our ability to decide and to build a stronger and more sovereign European Union. This is the reason why I always worked so that we would never weaken this project in our negotiations and the decisions we have to take. Lastly, it is about preserving and deepening the bilateral relationship, which is um, very much anchored in history and forward-looking. It is against this spirit that the European Union has at length negotiated an agreement, a withdrawal agreement with the United Kingdom. I will not get into the details of this agreement, and it does not belong to any member of the European Union alone to negotiate or to renegotiate this agreement, but I would like to say that the key elements of this agreement, including the Irish backstop, are not just technical constraints or legal quibbling, but indeed some genuine indispensable guarantees to preserve the stability in Ireland, to preserve the integrity of the single market, which is the foundation of the European project. And this is very much um, fully part of this uh, accord negotiated by the United Kingdom and the European Union. In addition, the European Union has always said that it was available to discuss, depending on the wishes of the United Kingdom, um, our future relationship, which in the end is essential, as it is about building our future, uh, our joint future. We will discuss all of that together. Uh, in a minute, but I would like to say, as a friend and as an ally of the United Kingdom, that it belongs to the United Kingdom alone to decide about its destiny, to decide about the way you will um, leave the European Union and the basis for uh, the future relationship. We are actively preparing for all the uh, possibilities, including that of an exit without an agreement on the 1st of October. It's not the choice of the European Union, but it is our joint responsibility vis-a-vis -vis our fellow citizens, vis-a-vis -vis our territories and our companies. And we have already prepared for that. But I know, no matter what, that the future of the United Kingdom, uh, considering our history and our values, cannot but be European. 
of geography speaks by itself and I can say with confidence about the future we can from it beyond the uncertainties that can be those of um, the present. Ladies and gentlemen, such are the few words I would like, I wanted to share with you. Once again, I'm extremely pleased to host uh, uh, Boris Johnson and Prime Minister, very pleased to have you. Merci, merci beaucoup. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, Emmanuel. Je suis ravi d'être ici à Paris. In view of, of what you've just said and in view of the, your remarks uh, overnight about Brexit, I want to come straight to the uh, to that particular point. I want to make it absolutely clear to you, uh, Emmanuel, to the French people, uh, that of course I want a deal, and I think we can get a deal and a good deal. I was powerfully encouraged by our conversations last night in. Berlin with our mutual friends and I know that with energy and with creativity and application we can find a way forward for all our businesses and our citizens but as you yourself has ju have just pointed out uh, Emmanuel uh, it is vital for trust in politics that uh, if you have a referendum then you should act on the instructions of the voters and that is why we must come out of the EU on October the 31st, deal or no deal. And then, of course, we can take our relationship forward. And when I say take it forward, I agree with you wholeheartedly, uh, Emmanuel, that it is a quite extraordinary friendship. At this moment, in Mali, French troops are being conveyed in British helicopters as we work together to fight terrorism in the Sahel. As we stand here together side by side at the Elysee, uh, British troops and French troops are side by side in Estonia, protecting the eastern borders of NATO. And when Assad's regime used chemical weapons against uh, his own people, it was Britain and France together with our American friends uh, who showed the collective revulsion of the West in taking out those chemical weapons facilities. Together, we built the world's first supersonic passenger aircraft. We built a tunnel under the channel. Uh, and today, we're actually collaborating on genomics that hold out the hope of curing the world's most intractable diseases. At your G7 in uh, Biarritz that, that you're, you're chairing, which I'm sure will be a great success, Monsieur le Président, uh, the UK and France will work hand in glove, coup d'un coup, uh, to tackle climate change, to tackle the tragic loss of species and biodiversity, and as you rightly say, to ensure that every girl in the world gets 12 years of quality education. And I think whatever happens with Brexit, it is our joint ambition, UK and France, that we should deepen and intensify our economic interpenetration. And just as French buses are about to say, ply the streets of London, thanks to the unique openness of the UK economy. It is also a stunning fact that your beautiful TGVs run on steel railways made in Scunthorpe by British Steel. Not a lot of people know that. In fact, the British ambassador didn't know that, which I just told them. Uh, but there could be no more powerful metaphor, I think, for the cultural, uh, the economic, uh, the political partnership between our countries. And I'm proud to say that in spite of some of the negative predictions over the last three years, our capital city in London remains one of the biggest French cities on earth. And long may it so remain. And I know that, of course, uh, Monsieur Le Président and support the hundreds of thousands of British citizens are living here in France as much as we in the UK uh, will treasure and support the 3.2 million EU nationals, including French citizens in our country. So let's get Brexit done. Let's get it done sensibly and pragmatically and in the interest of both sides. And uh, let's, well, let's not wait until October the 31st. Let's get on now in deepening and intensifying the friendship and the partnership between us over lunch. Thanks, <laughs> Excellent. Je crois qu'on va prendre deux questions. 
Prime Minister, Libby Gaynor, ITV mm. News. What does leaving without a deal actually mean? Does it uh, mean trading on WTO rules for the long term? Or is it effectively back to square one with more negotiations? And in that sense, isn't no deal a bit of a con? No. And Monsieur le uh, President, uh, President uh, Angela Merkel uh, showed some flexibility in Berlin last night over the question of uh, changing the Irish backstop. Don't you think you should cut uh, the new British Prime Minister a bit of slack as well? Oh, well, thank you very much, Libby. Uh, of course, as you know, a great deal of work has already been done to ensure that uh, the transition on October the 31st is as smooth as it possibly uh, can be, and so there are already agreements on, uh, on aviation, on financial services, many other sectors. And what we want to do now, between uh, in the next uh, 71 days or whatever it remains, we want to make sure that uh, we do all the necessary work on both sides of, of the channel to make sure that whether we get a, an agreement or not, our exit is as smooth and as uh, pain-free as possible for citizens and businesses on both sides. And that's what we're going to do. Regarding your question, I said it very clearly by way of an introduction, the backstop, the Irish backstop, as we call it, is a point which has been negotiated in the context of the operation, given the geography of Ireland and the past political situation. So it is an important element which allows us, uh, first of all, to guarantee the stability in Ireland and also the integrity of the single market. These are our two goals. When we talk about flexibility, well, let me be very clear with you. These two goals have to be um, met. And uh, we therefore have to find a solution that guarantees the integrity of the single market. We have to be able to guarantee to the companies, to the citizens, to the consumers in Europe uh, that we um, comply with the rules of the European Union. And when it comes in um, uh, on, on the market, it comes from the market which is not in the, in the European Union, um, is controlled. Then there are um, previous agreements, the Good Friday Agreement, there is also the political uh, and historical uh, situation and the relationship between your country and Ireland, and we therefore have to uh, respect what was negotiated in this respect. And within the context of uh, the past negotiations, we should be able to do some work. As to the first question, please allow me to underline something. We talk about the withdrawal agreement, but no matter what, there will be also negotiation as to the future relationship, it will be another step and we always handle things in the right uh, order. It's very clear, uh, Monsieur le Président, that under no circumstances, when you look at uh, the border with Northern Ireland, I'm just re repeating a point that bears repeating, under no circumstances will the UK government uh, be instituting, imposing checks or controls of any kind at that border. And we think uh, and I understand your desire to protect the integrity of the, of the single market. Of course we understand that. But we think that there are ways of protecting the integrity of the single market and allowing uh, the UK to exit from the EU whole and entire and, and perfect, as it were. And that is what we, uh, and it was very interesting to hear some of the, uh, the positive noises that we're now hearing about the ways that can be done. We look forward to developing those thoughts in, in the next few weeks. Monsieur le Président Henri Montaz de Politico, est-ce que vous êtes sur la même ligne que la chancelière euh, allemande On peut trouver euh, une alternative au backstop en 30 jours. Et Monsieur le Premier ministre, quelle est votre alternative au backstop Est-ce que la chancelière euh, Merkel Merkel said yesterday, and which is in the lines, which is very much in line with the discussions we've had from the very beginning, is that we need visibility in 30 days. So I'll just answer this to the reality of the backstop. And I believe that this also matches the, the goal of Prime Minister Johnson. No one will wait until the 31st of October, October to find uh, the right solution. But if we fail to find the right solution, of course we could not. Um, find, uh, do whatever it takes at the last minute. So we will make the most of this period of time and uh, Michel Barnier will be part of that, the European negotiator, um, trying to find solutions without uh, totally uh, shabby, um, 
withdrawal agreement because there has always been a lot of work and it's been approved by the 27. On this point, just like Chancellor Merkel, I'm also um, very much confident about uh, um, collective uh, joint in uh, intelligence. We should always be able, all together, be able to find something smart within 30 days if there's goodwill on both sides, and I believe there is. I've always been uh, presented as the, 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 the hard boy in the band, in the group. Um, um, but it's just that I. I've always been clear, a choice has been made, and the choice was made, and we cannot just ignore it. We will have to um, implement a decision taken by the British people and cannot walk about it. And I want to be efficient, and so this is um, what I said um, last spring and in the past, but uh, I very much uh, want all of us to find a solution. That being said, I can be very clear we will not find a new withdrawal agreement within 30 days, which will be very different from the existing one. It is just that what Michel Barnier has uh, negotiated can be amended um, while complying with the integrity of the uh, single market and, um, and, and the two goals I've mentioned, then we can find a solution. If not, it's probably a political issue, a political decision to be taken by the Prime Minister. It will not be our decision. Uh. Uh, very clearly than what uh, I think what Angela Merkel was saying uh, last night, if I, if I got that correct, I think I was standing next to her, she said, uh, if we can do this in two years, then we can do this in, in 30 days. And I, I admire that, that can-do spirit uh, that she seemed to, to have there. And I think she's right. I think that the technical solutions are readily available, and uh, they've been discussed at great length. Uh, you can have trusted uh, trader schemes, you can have electronic pre-clearing uh, for goods moving across the border. I just want to repeat one crucial thing, under no circumstances will the UK uh, be putting checks at the, at the frontier. And uh, we don't think it's necessary from the point of view of the EU to, uh, to do that to protect the integrity of the, of the single market. We think there are other ways of doing that. Uh, we've got, I think, adequate time to do it. Let's get on and do it. As I say, there are, there are all sorts of proposals that have already been made. I, I might direct you to an excellent uh, paper that uh, has been done by Greg Hands, other uh, MPs in, uh, in Westminster from all parties, that goes through some of the ways in which you can uh, check for contracts. I don't know, I've been afraid of this, mate. Uh, check for uh, stop smuggling, uh, but not have uh, checks at the frontier. That's the, that's the solution. And uh, where there's a will, there's a way. Merci beaucoup. Let's work. <laughs> well, that's Macron and uh, Boris Johnson. Will they ever stay with a deal or will it just go around in a circle? So they come up with some sort of solution or decision. I'm raising a glass to those who were born to stand out, to those who enjoy... EU nationals living in the UK have been alarmed at reports that Britain intends to end freedom of movement immediately if there's a no-deal Brexit. But the government has refuted suggestions that Europeans already living in the country will be left in legal limbo and says they'll still have until the end of next year to register to stay permanently. Well, live now to London, we can speak to Patricia Connell from the Three Million, a group campaigning for the rights of EU citizens living in the UK. Um, thanks for joining us on the programme. Um, can you outline what is your concern exactly? Because the government does say there'll be no changes. Anyone resident by the 31st of October will be able to stay. Well, it's very easy to, uh, to say that there won't be any changes. 
but the uh, it's obvious from the start that uh, the uh, the government in place is uh, is effectively very reckless because this will actually have a very direct effect on uh, European nationals living in the UK at present. The reason being is that um, we've got approximately 3.6 million uh, EU nationals uh, living in the UK. Of those, only about a million people have actually uh, applied for the settled status. Now, that is effectively the um, the paper that we will say. Well, actually, it's not a piece of paper. It's a uh, it's just a digital uh, number that you get, um, and that employers or banks or uh, uh, the NHS will actually have to access to be able to identify you as someone who is allowed to uh, get access to those services. Um, now, what it means in reality is that um, from the 1st of November, should we have a no deal Brexit, nobody will be able to identify the people who are, have actually arrived before um, the 1st of November and those that have actually arrived after the 1st of November. And this is why we are seeing at the moment a rush of people trying to register um, because they know that uh, it will be very difficult for anyone to make the distinctions between the two. So it's all very well saying, oh, but you've got until the end of December 2020 to register. In reality, it will actually have an effect from the 1st of November, should we have a new deal Brexit. The government does say, though, that those uh, who are uh, resident uh, will have the same entitlements to work benefits and services. They'll be able to prove these in the same way as they do now. Uh, and yet you fear they'll be caught up in a really difficult situation. You even said there could be another Windrush situation. Do you really think things get as bad as that? Well, I mean, if you... Yes, I do, actually. I do think that it could get as bad as that. It's very easy for... People who um, are working, who um, have a national insurance number and who have a passport with a chip to register so long as they have um, a, um, uh, an Android mobile phone that actually accepts the uh, app that the government uh, has put in place, except that there are a number of people who fall through the cracks. In fact, uh, we're talking about thousands of people who will be placed in that situation. So we are effectively looking at a windrush, wind rush, you know, on steroids, really. This is what Corbyn was said, and I, for once, actually agree with him. <laughs> he actually agrees with Corbyn, bloody hell. Right. Um, well, guys, I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll do another video, a video like this later when my phone's charged. Hope you've all enjoyed it, like I say. Thank you for joining me, and uh, tell me what you think about this uh, Brexit thing again, and uh, see you in the next one. Peace.